Well, good morning, everybody. This is Bob Allen. We're out on the patio with Good Morning Wainimi Bay. It's a beautiful Saturday morning. Got a whole bunch of people here, but we have one special guest. Thank you. Introduce yourself, Gabe. My name is Gabriel B. Pesh. They call me Gabe. And I'm from Staten Island, not Brooklyn like Bob. Oh, you but know. my father was from Brooklyn, see? Now, my father was also an opera singer, and he uh, was fairly famous in, New in Staten Island in New York because he was a professional at the time. Now, he went to, uh, to school, in high school on Staten Island, and so did I, in the very same schools, right? So consequently, all the teachers thought, because I was a the son of an opera singer, that I should probably be an opera singer too, right? So they would always uh, pick me to, to lead anything that was uh, in uh, music or anything of that sort whenever there was any show going on. Now, most of the teachers there were older, so consequently they all knew my father, and I had, they all did this to me. But there was one teacher that was very new. She had just graduated and just became a teacher, and she was only several years older than I was. I was about 16 or 17 at the time, and I took a real liking to her. She was very beautiful, and she was very nice to me because she also heard from these other teachers that I was probably some student that could be talked into doing anything necessary to make a show go. So that went on for a little while, and then I just tried to be the best I could and make and show show that I was a good student. So one day she, they, she gave us a, 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 an assignment to uh, get a, a, a poem of three, three stanzas or more and recite, uh, re, re, uh, learn it, rehearse it, and then come in that would be their test. Well, three stanzas didn't look too much like me, so I wanted to do something great. So I went to the library and I went out and found the longest poem that I could find that I could be interested in and I memorized it and worked on it and watched myself in the mirror reciting it and everything else and I got an A for the course. Right? Okay. About a year later my high school had won a competition in Staten Island to go uh, for, for, for which high school could, could uh, have the best show for that area. And then the winner from each borough was to go for finals and, and present the, the show at Carnegie Hall. Now we won on Staten Island, so we went to Carnegie Hall. Now as usual, I got picked to be the lead in the show. It was, a, it was sort of a variety act, a, a, a takeoff on a Spanish, Spanish fiesta and so forth. And we had several acts. One of the acts was a acrobatic dancer and she was very very good and she had two two jigs on it the first one everybody clapped and so forth and she left and went change change her costume meantime the, the, the show was going on there were other plays going on after a few minutes one of the people there handed me a note and looked at it and they said Gabe stall for time she went down to the mat and the dress dressing room was locked and she's going to be late getting back here for this. So stall for time so she can get dressed and come back up here. Well, I kept thinking, now what in the world could I possibly do to stall for time? So I remembered the poem that I had there, right? So I said to one of the guys, I said, as soon as this act is over, come over and run in here and say, hey, Gabe, have you ever been to a ball game? baseball game. So he did that and he said, Gabe, have you ever seen a baseball game? I said, have I ever seen a baseball game? Last week was opening day and I went to Mudville, but, but the outlook was not brilliant for the Mudville nine that day. The score stood 42 with just one inning more to play. And when Cooney died at first and Burroughs did the same, a sickly silence fell upon the patrons of the game. They thought if only Casey could get back at that, why, they'd give even money now with Casey at the bat. But Flynn presided against Casey, and so did Jimmy Blake. But the former was a pudding and the latter a fake. So upon that, that stricken multitude, grim, melancholy sat, for there seemed a very little chance of Casey's coming to the bat. But Flynn let drive a single to the one man of all, 
and bait Klamuch the spies, tore the cover off the ball. And when the dust had settled and they saw what had occurred, why, there stood Jimmy, safe at second, and Flynn a hugging third. From the gladdened thousands there rolled a joyous yell. It rumbled in the valley, it rattled in the dell, and knocked upon the hilltop. For Casey, mighty Casey, was advancing to the bat. There was ease in Casey's manner as he stepped into his place. There was pride in Casey's bearing and a smile on Casey's face. And when we stomped into the keys, he slightly doffed his cap. No stranger in the crowd, but twas Casey at the bat. 10,000 eyes were on him when he rubbed his hands with dirt, and 5,000 tongues applauded when he wiped them on his shirt. And while the writhing pitcher ground the ball into his hip, defiance gleamed in Casey's eye, a sneer curled Casey's lip. And now the leather covered sphere comes hurtling through the air. Close by the sturdy batsman, the ball unheeded sped. That ain't my style, said Casey. Strike one, the umpire said. From the benches black with people, there rose a muffled roar, like the beating of the storm waves on the stern and distant shore. Cab, kill the umpire, shut us someone on the stand. And it is likely they'd have killed him, had not Casey raised his hand. With a smile of Christian charity, great Casey's visage shone. He still the rising tumult and bad game go on. He signaled to the pitcher, and once more the spheroid flew. But Casey still ignored it, and the umpire said, strike two. Fraud, fraud, cried the mad Nelson. Cry, and the echo answered fraud. But one scornful look from Casey, and the crowd was awed. They saw his face go stern and cold. They saw his muscles strain, and they knew that Casey wouldn't let the ball go by again. The sneer is gone from Casey's lip. His teeth are clenched in hate. He pounds with cruel violence his bat upon the plate. And now the pitcher holds the ball, and now he lets it know they are shattered by the force of Casey's blow. Somewhere in this favored land, the sun is shining bright. The band is playing somewhere, and somewhere hearts are light, and somewhere men are laughing, laughing, and children run and shout, but there's no joy in one for, for Casey. Mighty Casey has struck out. Oh, <laughs> wow. Oh, that's oh, wonderful. Oh, wonderful. That's such a feel. That is, that is better than anyone could have expected. Yeah. yeah. And when, <laughs> when, I, when, when I finished with that, we won the, we won the, the championship. <laughs> 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 uh, 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 that's awesome. That's great. Awesome. <laughs>